we don't have more than 90 minutes today, so maybe we actually did, do get started. Um, so welcome again. So this is the uh, fourth and last session. The discussions will continue after this uh, workshop, of course, but uh, this is the, the last of the main sessions. We're going to talk about future developments and next steps. And um, there's some ground rules that I, I think you've seen by now, so I, I don't plan on repeating them, but please uh, continue to keep them in mind. You've been doing very well, and everybody's been explain it very carefully and uh, I think it's been very understandable to everybody so that's that's great despite our backgrounds and uh, goals for today um, there's a little bit of a look back at the previous sessions and then we'll talk about potential future developments the different areas we'll talk about conclusions and next steps that's a discussion item we'll also talk about the workshop next steps more concretely um, it's a RFC coming out on, on each of the IAB workshops, so we'll do that again. But not only that, we'll let me discuss um, how we continue. And uh, as usual, uh, Vesna's uh, slides from the beginning are a useful reminder on what can we do and what are the potential classes of conclusions, what we know or don't know, what can we do in terms of improvements, and what might be the next steps. And uh, today's agenda, so indeed there's some summaries by myself, uh, Colin and Eve on the, diff the three different sessions we've had so far. Um, we have five talks, I think, on potential future development areas um, on carbon aware networking technology, mobile networks, uh, what we should not be doing. It's an interesting item always. And then uh, ITF and ITF process. And uh, I'm gonna try and ask you guys to be brief and to the point. Uh, we don't have a huge amount of time um, given the number of uh, talks on the agenda. Uh, if you want to actually leave some time for discussion. So if you take too much time, I, I might actually try and cut you off. Then we'll have some discussion mostly about like what, what is the conclusion or what should we be doing concretely? And uh, and then I'm gonna reserve it just a little bit of time at the end to talk about the next steps workshop-wise. Um, Colin, anything to add? Uh, no, I don't think I have anything to add. I think that's uh, a good summary of uh, what the plan is. Thank you. Yeah, and um, any, any agenda bash otherwise? Okay, I guess not, so we'll, we'll keep going. So uh, first us up, I will actually describe um, a brief summary of session one, which was, I thought really, really interesting because we had uh, tons of, um, yeah, basically different viewpoints. And I think, uh, at least for me, some of that was, was really new. So it was very refreshing. Um, but I did spend a little bit of time beforehand trying to figure out, like, you know, if we look at anything in this space, what can we learn from it? And like, what are the things I should have on, on my slides or, or on the notepad? I came up with uh, like this template, this observations, useful tools, actions that we can actually take and goals that we should have. And, and, and the really interesting stuff also is often that there's some research problems that are clearly are not things that we can engineering wise do today, but it will be fun if they, they were solved and would be good topics for people, students to go and do a PhD thesis or something, write a paper or do a uh, measurement. Um, so for session one, I, I tried to fill this in um, and there's you know plenty of things, of course, I'm not going to go through this in detail, but just, uh, you know, the, the main feelings that this is so much bigger than our tech, uh, obviously, of course, but, you know, maybe for all us and maybe for me in particular, it wasn't like necessarily obvious before this workshop, but that's, that's the case. And uh, that influences all, all parts of society and there's a bunch of non-technical things uh, also involved. Vesna summarized them, as she talked about inequality, uh, externalized costs, uh, justice or lack thereof, and so on. Um, so that, that's a good thing to keep in mind. Um, so this is really broad. And also um, 
I talked a little bit about the improvements, how they come in different forms. And um, we should keep that in mind, not to get stuck on like, the thing that I control that I'm going to improve and solve everything with that. That's not the case. Probably we need multiple things. Um, and then useful tools. And this is like a slightly different from maybe like if we look at some of the other sessions, the useful tools are going to be like this tech, but, but here is like softer things like solidarity and awareness and sufficiency of, you know, what, what we, um, what we have, um, or how we should be happy with what we have and how we should make that actually last and, and serve our needs rather than just chase the numbers. Good, good things to think about. Um, and also, um, not waiting for the perfect solution. That, that's always bad for almost anything, and particularly true of this. Um, things we can do. On the right side, I have some goals, and one of them is uh, continuous improvement. So that, that's a pair. Uh, of course, there's also some more concrete, hard things like this you know, use of renewable energy in, in the systems that we um, run, and, uh, and also carbon awareness that uh, Eve talked about. Actions that we should take, I think um, from session one in particular, it was pretty clear that like, since we are not alone in this, we should perhaps be connected somehow and not, not, not to work in isolation, but be aware of what's happening elsewhere and be aware of what the demands are and possibilities and working together and so on. And then the goals um, mentioned continuous improvement also, but also I'm a little bit moving away from this chasing bigger numbers or as I put it, bigger and more bloated web pages every year to um, actual increased usefulness of you know, whatever we do with ICT to, to or, or the internet. Um, usefulness to me and to the society at large. Um, and also declining emissions. I think that's, that's been fairly clear that there's some, some demand for reduction uh, and not just staying where we are. But at the same time, not compromising on this usefulness. And then a bunch of things that we could do research on. Um, one thing that was mentioned was effects beyond energy. That energy is, of course, very high profile, but that's not the only thing. It has like really serious effects from some of the raw material uses and, and so on. So we do need to think about that. And that probably needs more research, and or, or maybe that's available somewhere, but I, I'm not aware of it. Um, it struck to me as um, some of this carbon awareness stuff uh, might benefit from thinking about like how can you do that in a sort of a multi-value and um, you know uh, variable trustworthiness uh, world where you need to learn something from the other side of the planet, but you don't know if you can trust it. How do you, how do we do that um, in this this case? What well, useful thing to think about uh, and also business model impacts. Don't have a lot of data on that. I think, um, for instance, what's the cost of advertising? Um, yeah. Um, anybody else want to add something or take away or dispute something that's on the slide? Yeah, I don't see anybody jumping to the microphone. So, um, yeah, maybe maybe that's it for this summary. And then Colin, perhaps yeah, you take over and discuss uh, the next session. Yeti, one, uh, this is Carlos, one one very quick uh, way in which I interpret, uh, you know, some of the early sessions is that it's two things, really. Number one is that there's no one size fit all. There's no single silver bullet for this and, uh, you know, problem understanding as well as solution is to come in a lot of different uh, domains, dimensions, areas. That's number one. And, uh, you know, number two, I feel that there's also, uh, you know, we all bring, just because this is multidisciplinary, we bring our preconceptions on, uh, you know, what is the high order beat. And I think, you know, going back to your last point on research, what is really the impact of actually making change uh, in particular areas? We all go quickly to energy and to carbon, and uh, and uh, th there's actually 
immense amount of data um, is not the same for a core router than for a mobile endpoint. Uh, you know, even if it is carbon contribution during the overall life cycle. Uh, so, so I feel that understanding is also, uh, you know, going to benefit how ITF inserts into this, uh, into this bigger, uh, you know, problem slash contribute to the solutions. Good points. Thank you. All right, Colin. Chris, oh, you had your hand Chris. Yeah, sorry. Thanks, folks. Um, there was one thing that uh, I kind of took away from when I was looking through this. One thing that uh, was possibly some research that needs doing is to get an idea of, let's say that you were to provide some more efficient technology for this, either through the form of protocols or different hardware. I feel like if we have a particular trajectory that we need to be on that has been outlined by the ITU and other groups like halving emissions by 2030, then it kind of suggests the need for some scenarios and some idea of how quickly replacements of existing inefficient stuff might need to be necessary or what assumptions we might make about how quickly we think that the energy itself will be becoming less harmful in terms of carbon emissions for this because if you don't have any if you don't have any assumptions here it's going to be quite difficult to work against the other thing that might be worth actually that i, I was really thinking about is that other industries who have to decarbonize they've basically said we're going to try and decarbonize by this date we think it's going to cost this much and that count and that works out to be a rough idea of how much investment may be, may be required so for context uh, between now and 2050, the aviation industry have said it's going to cost this many trillion dollars, we reckon, to re replace all the stock and switch to uh, greener aviation. And that works out to be a figure of like 128 billion US dollars year on year between now and 2050. If you have some numbers like that, then at least it allows folks to actually take uh, feed into some of the existing discussions that's a kind of the COP28 and the COP29, where people say, well, we need this much to actually stay on track for what the science has told us to be doing. And I think this is something that would be really, really helpful when speaking to both policymakers, but also private sector to say, well, we need to raise this money to make this possible, even if we're just going to focus on training people to use the existing infrastructure much more efficiently. A really good point. Uh, I agree that that's that's a useful thing to have, and and also that we don't have it that today. I'm trying to add these things as as, as we hear them. Thanks a lot. Yeah, and now maybe Colin. Uh, yes. Do Do you have my slide, or do you want me to share it? Maybe you share it. Stop your sharing, Sam, and let's share my. Yeah, done. <coughs> All right, is that working? Can people see my slide? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, so uh, I, I can't see the hands being raised, so if you have questions, please do jump in. Um, so se session two was very much about uh, what we know, uh, and that there were three talks uh, initially by Michael Wessel, uh, then Daniel Shine, and then Jens uh, Mahmoudin. Um, Michael's talk focused on what we know about the energy usage and what information exists about that usage. Um, it's pretty clear that there have been um, a, a a, a bunch of studies conducted, which are at best uh, misleading. Um, some of them are, are perhaps uh, outright misinformation. Uh, and there's been many articles that that are, are getting a lot of interest, uh, uh, being being widely spread, that that are promoting misleading estimates of the energy usage of the network. Um, I think what what I took away from Michael's talk was that, that there will be benefits in both um, getting accurate measurements and also in developing a communication strategy, um, some way of ensuring that uh, information which we have some confidence in is is uh, disseminated to to perhaps try and counter some of the the more misleading information that's out there. 
the second talk was from Dan, um, who just discussed how to estimate the energy usage and the carbon footprint of the networks. Um, he spoke about the different factors influencing the energy usage, um, some discussion about how energy proportionality is uh, pretty poor in the networks, um, how the, the energy usage doesn't necessarily correspond to the, the amount of traffic, um, and um, about some of the, the, the limited impacts of um, um, and mar marginal emissions and so on, uh, and um, carbon intensity and of the energy supply and, and its impact and so on. Um, I think some of the interesting points to me of this discussion were about the the upgrade cycle, uh, the potential for peak. Uh, what was I think mentioned was peak shaving, uh, trying to shift or defer some of the traffic uh, to to avoid the peak times, to avoid um, the, the usage getting to the point where upgrades can be needed, uh, to at least delay the the need to upgrade the infrastructure and to switch to a higher capacity and hence pa higher power infrastructure. And then the final talk was uh, Jen's talking about uh, some of the measurement data. Um, and I think that this one was interesting and, and uh, perhaps a little bit controversial in the group. Uh, and he, his data seemed to show that while the, the amount of data being used is growing rapidly, um, the energy consumption of data centers themselves has been close to flat and the, the energy consumption of the networks is growing pretty slowly in comparison to the, the rate at which the group is being used. Um, most of the discussion in the session was around the, these later measurements. Um, there was a bunch of concern uh, that um, while um, flat to slow growth is better than we, we had perhaps expected, uh, flat to slow growth in energy usage is perhaps better than we'd expected, um, the current emissions are still too high. Uh, and there's also some concern that um, you know, we, we don't necessarily understand why the consumption is flat and what, what are the engineering efforts which are causing it to stay that way um, and how to accelerate those engineering efforts to beat the curve. Uh, so rather than having a flat or slowly growing energy consumption, have declining energy consumption uh, over time. Uh, and it's not clear what headroom we have and how we can, uh, you know, as I say, move on to sort of beat the curve rather than just keeping up with the, the traffic. Uh, and there was some discussion at the end about um, what we don't know, and this seemed to relate to um, breaking down the energy use um, by different applications, different parts of the network, et cetera, um, rather than just overall aggregate measures. So, so we can start to understand which parts of the system we need to optimize to reduce the, the usage. Uh, I think that's that's my summary of session two. Anyone have anything else to add on this session? Okay, I don't see any questions. Okay, shall I share? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. okay. So session three was yesterday and um, we, oh, maybe let me go into full screen mode. We had five terrific talks and some great conversation. The first of which um, centered around the metrics. Um, Alex gave an incredibly thorough um, assessment of the metrics needed. Um, and then we had uh, Suresh giving some sort of general thoughts on solutions and trade offs, with Russ following that by including uh, a routing, a very detailed routing perspective. Uh, Louise um, spoke to us about uh, the prospects for multicast. And Brendan uh, spoke about data formats. And um, I felt there were many takeaways in the discussions, just a few of which I've highlighted here. Um, as I stated, I thought that Alex, um, Alex's talk did a great job to sort of categorize the metrics needed um, for devices, paths, flows, and the overall network, and pointed to some concrete next steps that are available to us to get started, like 
Yang models and protocol extensions. Um, the second talk um, uh, was interesting because it very clearly uh, pointed out to us that while we focus on scopes one and two, that scope three, which is the usage of all the equipment that many of our companies produce, um, that far eclipses the totals and the sum of the totals of scopes one and two. We should also consider some inclusion of what's being, uh, what's emergent as a scope four, which is kind of a handprint effect, which is what might be the savings of using technology towards um, others' footprints. Um, so that was kind of an interesting uh, perspective, I thought. And um, another point that was made was around how there's so many sustainability best practices that perhaps we should uh, begin to collect them into a document. There's no, you know, we should start doing that sort of straight away. Um, when we got to the presentation about, um, about routing, uh, what was interesting was, you know, Russ pointing out to us that merging, it's really important for us to merge multiple metrics into one, because when we start to do these joint optimizations, um, it's a well-known NP complete problem to have multiple metrics. And so the convergence uh, into one metric uh, is something we're going to have to take strategically. Uh, it was also interesting to hear from the control plane perspective, um, the, the levers we have to either reduce, uh, to remove redundant links or re remove equipment or, is there a question? Okay. Um, anyway, that we have several levers for reducing power usage, and all of which can be done in a, a manner that is time variant, which was a topic that came up multiple times yesterday and um, in previous sessions um, around, you know, if we know beforehand a priori that links will come and go, that we can schedule uh, we can have a more robust routing algorithm uh, that can schedule um, its knowledge to match the coming and going of predictable behaviors uh, about link these links. Um, it was interesting to get an update on uh, multicast that it's perhaps time to reconsider its usage because in the past we have focused on uh, the simplicity uh, of the algorithm rather than the efficiencies of the algorithms and that many of the problems that were considered old challenges have new solutions. Uh, most importantly, uh, creating a stateless multicast. So router state was a problem in the past for the wide area networks. Um, and also that um, the performance of implementing multicast in user space is now competitive, um, or is at least reasonable enough uh, than as compared to say being required to um, do this in kernel space. And uh, I also found it very instructive that in multiple of the talks yesterday, uh, there was the emphasis that we should be reusing techniques that we have experience with from these more constrained contexts, uh, constrained networking context, as well as uh, most importantly, you know, the wireless context uh, where we do have to already consider low power um, and that we should remember that our, the very edges of our topology are wireless. Uh, it was fascinating also to hear about uh, data formats. I mean, I, who knew that, that there's typically a 30% energy reduction uh, when using binary over text, it was good to see the quantification. Um, you know, intuitively, we, you would assume that, but it was good to see a number. Um, I uh, also appreciated that we heard, you know, we were encouraged to stop thinking of the network as an infinite resource. And therefore, along with that, stop ignoring data formats, because even if you have these small reductions in the aggregate, they add up. And the example was given that in contrast to video, which we know is the main uh, 
type of uh, traffic on the network and um, accounts for a large percentage, maybe 90% plus of traffic on the network, we still, we sent emails all the time and the what ifs of if we had a CBOR representation of MIME for all those MIME encoded emails that we're sending every day, um, many times a day. Uh, and uh, there was also some in the discussion at the very end of the presentations um, a concession that we recognize that at least the current state of monitoring is not very efficient in and of itself, um, but we've got to start somewhere and that um, we, you know, it's important for us to understand approximately where energy is consumed to understand where the high impact place is for us to focus our attention, including on monitoring itself eventually. Those are some of my takeaways, but I would welcome um, others to jump in and uh, contribute their impressions. And I, of course, cannot see the people's hands being raised, so please help me by speaking out. I don't see any raised okay. hands either. I just had a, a one comment myself that, that um, uh, that that the um, TVR type of time varying um, action is, in, in my mind at least, it's sort of a part of a bigger thing, or at least a related thing that that is about ability to handle things on a particular uh, time and then sleep at other times, and that's um, not just a routing thing. It's it sort of goes across implementation technologies and. And and protocols and design of link layers and details of link layers and so on. So in, in uh, 4G and 5G, for instance, there's some some details that lead to very different power usage and um, some savings can be done in 5G that were not possible in 4G because of these things. Um, so maybe that's a thing that could be also noted. Okay. I think Vesna has her hand up. I was just curious. Um, I liked what I heard uh, when you said that uh, documenting best current practices uh, in sustainability is was one of the conclusions, but I didn't see it on your slide. Did I miss it, or uh, and if so, well, it was there? Here, let me um, let me okay. share again. Thank you. Yeah, um, what I was saying was here, um, the sustainability considerations should be put into a document. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. If you need volunteers to help out to that, uh, I can help. Absolutely. So, um, I think, uh, Eve, like, you know, if you're talking to my, like, uh, about my talk, right, in, in this one, right? So, mm -hmm. the point was, like, not just to do the, um, the, the best practices, but also talk about the trade offs, right? I think that was like, you know, 1 thing I kind of wanted to add because there might be other things that for people to consider. So, like, not just say, like, hey, this is good and mm -hmm. this is what you need to kind of, um, I would say balance it against. Right? So, I, I think a lot of the things we saw, um, have some kind of trade offs. It's not like always like a, um, green thing is a win always. Right? So, I think that's something I kind of wanted to emphasize a little bit on, but I think Eve like summarized it extremely well. Right? Like, and yeah, I would love to uh, have some help on that. If, um, um, people want to help, like, I'll certainly help writing something. Yeah. And in fact, I think that comment about sustainability considerations was something that you said later in the session, but it seemed to weave into your talk as well. Yeah, so thanks. just put it there. <laughs> But it was made, it was a comment that you made and underscored. Thanks, Eve. Thank you. Eve, perhaps we move forward. Did you also want to talk about uh, uh, sure. carbon awareness? Yes. And I will say that, you know, I, I tried my best to put it all on one slide um, <laughs> as, as requested. Um, and I'll, I'll try not to linger on the things that we have um, stated a lot, but um, suffice to say, you know, there was lots of discussion on um, the whether energy usage should be increasing, be, remaining the same or being reduced. And I wanted to go back to 
sort of the urgency of some of the organizations like the UN IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, um, World, uh, uh, the Resource Institute, um, that, you know, when you look at the sixth assessment that came out over the last year, it makes it very clear we're sort of in code red, you know, we, all of the advice is, you know, this is the decade where we need to make a difference. Um, and although there are these um, goals uh, to say, you know, 50% reductions by 2030 um, and invest as more um, uh, even quicker reductions by 10% per year, I'm, uh, these are recommendations, but everything points to that we need to front load this decade. So we should be assertive and aggressive and remember the urgency of this task. So uh, that, that's what I wanted to say there um, amidst all the emails that are flowing about that. Um, uh, for carbon aware networking, um, we, we wanna take all of these good metrics that we already have around performance of our of the internet, of ICT, um, of networks specifically, and we wanna augment them. And uh, in particular, we, we gravitate to energy because it feels like it's in our wheelhouse. It's, you know, it's kind of next of kin for performance metrics that we've typically uh, focused on, at least for the core network. We know that in the wireless realm, you know, it's very much front and center, um, but let's augment them with more information about carbon and more environmental metrics. And one of the phrases that uh, my colleague and co-author, uh, Don Netfus, as often said was, we cannot energy efficiency our way to net zero uh, greenhouse gas emissions by 2050, which is also one of the recommendations, which some have said, you know, that's very, very late in the game. Um, but even so, we can't, we, we need to have the tandem task that we need to be looking at not just energy reductions, but carbon reductions and other environmental impact reductions. So uh, this is, of course, just focusing on the carbon part of it, um, but we the first um, task we need to do is to deliver on telemetry extensions so that we can assess the pain points that are happening. Um, we need to make those the telemetry real time um, and we need to quantify maybe as we go along. I mean, we, we want to understand what we're using and also what we're how we're reducing. Um, and this has to happen at the platform level, the component level. It's not sufficient to just be doing this for CPUs. Um, after all, uh, we really want to help out applications. So we need to, on a thread by thread basis, understand um, what is our what is the impact of applications. And that really was the thrust of this workshop, or at least the title for this workshop is the Internet Applications and Services. So. Uh, we need to get to that level of specificity, and we also need to consider and track secondary effects like cooling and, and so forth. Um, in monitoring electricity consumed and carbon intensity, which I've both I've put them both underneath the umbrella of carbon intelligence, um, we need to we want to monitor and track them at the endpoints, the sources and destinations, but also we want to leverage in-network telemetry to understand the hop by hop um, assessment as well. And we know that there that all of our constituents who happen to be actors like the developers, the users, the stakeholders, the operators, everyone wants tools that are gonna help with accurate measurements. And we know that, for example, um, uh, not only are we, you know, there's some shortcomings in retrieving real-time information, but also even the, we need fine-grained carbon intensity information, uh, a consistency around the frequency, uh, the regions within which we can gather carbon intensity information, even the completeness around the globe for that kind of information. Um, and we want tools that not only help us measure, but also help us model, because we're not only always going to be able to get those measurements. So we're going to have to estimate them and even in cases predict them. And so it's somewhat of a sorrowful state that we find um, some of our tools like Traceroute, um, which used to help us to understand hot by hound uh, accounting of other kinds of metrics. Wouldn't it be great to have a tool that allowed us out of band to um, look at the network and have some observability of it with regards to carbon, uh, both energy and carbon. 
And uh, in the earlier talk on um, in the first session, uh, we did outline uh, more about, you know, the end goal is many different facets, kind of a toolkit of carbon awareness throughout the stack. And um, one of the cultural, uh, uh, I guess, alignment, the cultural alignment that we have with the IETF is that we have many working groups in which we could probably be doing some of this work, both at the routing and transport levels for traffic engineering and so forth. Um, but again, I want to go back to the fact that we need to sort of accelerate our efforts, accelerate deployment, and to do that, we really need to have some rigorous testing and certification potentially so that we can attest to the measurements that we get, or even the attest to the approximations that we can account for the and and understand how we how we audited the network. Um, and uh, we need to be able to scale this up. I worry that culturally, um, we don't have the apparatus in place, certainly not in the ITF, for things like um, cert certification or validation to the degree of rigor that we might need it. And so uh, that that's um, an open for us to consider who might be our partners, which is exactly what I say in this last point, which is it's become very clear in all of the discussions um, that uh, we need to be collaborating across sort of all corners of the internet and those who um, have a stake in it. Um, and especially those who are working hard in other comm standards organizations. Uh, we've heard about the ITU. Um, we, uh, we have heard about, um, you know, like there, there are other organizations um, in the mobile space. I suspect we'll hear about some of them. There was a great report that just came out this week from the NGMN about um, commitments in the mobile space. Uh, you know, so we need to be partnering uh, to make sure that we we have, and I think it was uh, Pranilla who suggested we needed a gap analysis. Uh, others saying we need best practices and even shared terminology. So we're speaking the same language. Um, I feel I'd be remiss if I didn't underscore that we really need to understand the socio-technical implications because we want to affect change, but we want to affect the right kind of change, which in turn are going to affect the policies that are created by governments. And then also we want the technology we create to be adopted. And so we need to understand what motivates people to care and to adopt um, technology. If we yeah. may need to move on. And so my last point then is just, and, and this is really important. I feel like there's a follow-up conversation we had here, maybe another workshop <laughs> around the coming together of the internet and the electric grid. We, we absolutely have to understand it. Um, there was an interesting paper I would uh, recommend reading that Bruce Nordman submitted about how could we influence the re-architecture of this electric grid, um, drawing upon what we know from the internet, um, understanding pricing, understanding business models, um, because after all, the electric grid is going to have to supply four times as much electricity um, as it's producing now in order to make even the transition just to the electrification of transportation. And as we know, that's going to imply massive disruption to the infrastructure. Um, and there's this opportunity to affect change there um, and to be involved there. So. There you have. Thank you. Thank you Thanks for that extra um, minute. I think we're sort of um, uh, out of time for questions. Maybe um, perhaps we should move on to the next talk. Uh, Suresh or Carlos, which one of you is doing it? I can go, Yari. Thank you. So I just had one slide, and, and Eve, like you did an awesome job. Like you know, this you consumed a lot of like you know what I was going to say, but I'm happy anyway. So it will be go ahead sorry. <laughs> You inspired me to include it. There you have it. <laughs> so, so will we have discussions afterwards or? We will have time for discussion afterwards. Okay, yeah, because I had a question. Oh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. That's okay, good. thank you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so just, just like Gary and Colin asked to summarize, like pretty much the day three, the the improvement, the uh, impl um, the implementation technology and protocols. So I think like a lot of this is going to be overlapping with what you've said, but I just do want to put up the salient things that came up, not only on day three, but also before um, that's related to like, you know, what we can do 
pretty quickly on the implementation and the technology side. So one thing that kind of came up, a lot of talks was like, you know, the, we need to measure like what we have to do, like, you know, uh, how to improve things. So I think the metrics on networking was like pretty high up, like, you know, quite a few, like, you know, Alex's talk, our talk, like, you know, even the, uh, like, you know, earlier, like, you know, I think Eve's talk, like, you know, we, a lot of it uh, actually focused on how to measure things. And uh, one of the key things was like, how do we standardize the terminology and what is getting measured? So like, we don't, we all talk about the same thing when we are comparing uh, different products or different networks and so on to how to talk the same language. And and I think this is another key thing, like it came again in multiple talks, like, you know, how do we improve non-networking things? So we are networking people, we can improve that, but and there's like two aspects, like, you know, how do we kind of take care of like our value chain, like, you know, where things are coming from. So like, you know, I think Alex was talking a little bit about, um, you know, how do we actually like look at the power and, and like, you know, uh, on, on the chat side, uh, Jan and Maris all are talking about it as well. Like, you know, how do we actually um, take the whole product life cycle into consideration, right? Like, you know, how do we take the packaging, the modularity, uh, and we also talked about like, you know, how things can be like more reusable, right? Like how can we things uh, a bit more flexible uh, at the cost of like having a longer life for the product? And I think it's like, uh, I think also dovetails into what Yari said a little bit, um, you know, how do we like st stick with like, you know, um, something that's good enough like to go forward, right? And and these all dovetail into having slight a little bit more flexibility built in if it doesn't cost too much, right? And and kind of like keep things for longer. And the other angle was really the energy aware routing stuff. So there's like uh, like simple things like you know picking more energy efficient routes if you have the information, uh, and also time variant routing that like you know um, uh, Russ and Alvaro's like talk was about. Um, so there's like kind of compromises in there again as well. Um, and I think that's like a theme. I kind of want to summarize it at the end, but the th theme was like, okay, like, you know, if you start doing stuff like, you know, um, you know, turning off links or turning off routers and so on, like, you know, the convergence like kind of takes a hit, right? Like, so it's not going to be like a zero cost to uh, do this. And I think like earlier talks, I think it was, uh, Daniel who was talking about duty cycling things, right? Like, so it kind of fits into the same thing. So the TVR can either be due to constraints in the, um, the technology itself or it could be something that you uh, actually want to do, which is duty cycling. And I think uh, another concept that came up was like, is it possible to time shift demand? So this came up in like multiple things, like, you know, how do we um, like kind of like, you know, not hit the peaks, right? Because the the function of like, you know, the, the networks spending energy is not like pretty, it's not linear. So there's like a whole bunch of like discontinuities and how do we actually keep stuff uh, uh, by time shifting demand? So we don't have to grow as quickly or wait till the, I think like it was Vesna who talked about a little bit, right? Like wait for the uh, improvements to catch up, right? Like before we do the upgrades to the network capacity. And uh, on the multicast side, again, like there's like kind of, I, I heard like two different things that are like kind of opposite to each other. Um, so like, you know, how can we use multicast to improve things, right? Like, you know, kind of like CDN distributions and stuff and so on, but also like stuff on the side, like, you know, kind of um, uh, Pascal talking about like, you know, how, like, you know, multicast affects like a lot of the constraint network. So I think it's kind of, again, uh, boils down to this kind of uh, trade-off thing. And uh, uh, so following on into data formats, like, uh, and this is like a really good presentation as well, like, you know, the CBOR JSON kind of comparison. And there's like two things uh, kind of came off from it. Like one of them is the readability versus efficiency trade-offs, like have to be made sometimes, like, uh, if you really compress things, um, it, it, is it going to make it less readable or, and does it matter? Right? I think that's something we need to think about. And also, uh, how much is the magnitude of impact? So we talk about like 30%, right? Like, you know, what is that 30% off? So if, you, if it's just going to be a manifest for some video that's already compressed, like, you know, how much does it save? Um, and going up to like high level thoughts, um, I think this is like an interesting thing that came up in, in chat. And I think Rob talked about it a little bit. Um, is there a way for us to kind of share um, the energy impact to the users? I think this is like a very difficult problem, but it's a very interesting problem for us to look at. So it's kind of like a longer term thing. Uh, how do we actually uh, show the users like what they are like really resulting in energy impact, right? And would that change user behavior? That's something to kind of get to. And and the follow up to that is, um, is good enough good enough? So is there like, you know, if, if people are happier with like, you know, lower definition video, or like, you know, lower latency or like lower availability, like should be able to push towards that rather than trying to always maximize on all these uh, axes. It's another thing high level we need to think of. 
And another interesting thought that came up, like mostly in the chat and, and discussions, uh, was like, if we design for constraint, is it going to be uh, equally good for non-constraint? So like, you know, kind of think of the most constrained environment, like, you know, most energy uh, restrictive and design for that and, and try to reuse them for non-constraint because it should work, right? It, it, it's like a, like a hypothesis. We need to kind of test if that's true or not, right? And, and the last thing I want to kind of leave with, and this is kind of, I talked a bit uh, earlier about this. Um, so no such thing as free lunch. So it's, um, I, I know we can always optimize on the energy front, but it, does it actually catch um, the, um, like, you know, the other side of it? Like, is there other things that are important for the user? So kind of document the trade-offs a little bit and, and go from there. So Yari, I saw you typed something in the chat, but I cannot see. Yeah, I'm avoiding asking a question because of lack of time, but I oh, sure. I, 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 and I, others can comment on the chat also. Yeah, so I'm 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 done with it, Yari. So I kind of like rush through it. So like, no, um, if, if you have time, I can take questions. Step one. Yeah, I, I'm almost of the opinion that that we go, go to the end of the presentation and then we discuss. So, um, Beatrice, I think you're next. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Yes. I'll share my PowerPoint. Okay. And we see it. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, I'll start with the, where we are. Uh, we are currently shifting from the monolithic architecture of uh, 4G, going towards the service-based one uh, of 5G, in which network elements are uh, network functions, uh, which are usually uh, virtual machines or containers. Regarding the uh, radio access network, uh, we can say that 5G supports uh, open run, uh, which supports uh, the uh, splitting of uh, um, the base stations. Moreover, it's worth highlighting that uh, most of the energy consumptions, uh, about two thirds, uh, is uh, related to the uh, radio access network. Uh, finally, uh, we can say that 5G enables the edge computing technology. Uh, this uh, modifies, is going to modify uh, the uh, data center topology uh, from huge uh, centralized data centers towards uh, smaller and uh, smaller edge data centers. Uh, from a research point of view, uh, we are alre already at uh, 6G and we are focusing uh, especially on its crucial point, which is going to be energy efficiency. Even though uh, we can say that the energy efficiency issues issue has already been tackled uh, a bit in uh, 5G, for example, uh, by increasing uh, the sleep modes of uh, device of 5G devices. Uh, the next steps that we have to take, uh, I think, start with uh, observability because, I was, as we said earlier, we can't control what we don't measure. So, uh, especially here, I think standardization bodies uh, such as IETF can make a difference. We need, first of all, to define which metrics to consider. And then also we have to relate these metrics to individual vertical applications. This is a, a non-trivial task since we have in 5G at least one virtualization layer. Once we have the metrics, we can make the network uh, energy or carbon aware, and we can exploit this awareness in order to, um, by incentivizing economically, the stakeholders who uh, consume less, for example. Uh, another use of the metrics that we have to do uh, is the uh, optimization. And we see the trend uh, of energy efficiency optimization and optimization in general is following artificial intelligence now. In the position papers that were presented in this workshop, I found uh, four proposed uh, solutions regarding the energy efficiency of mobile networks. Uh, the first one was uh, proposed by uh, a paper from anonymous authors 
uh, who propose a method to collect and calculate the end-to-end -end energy efficiency of edge uh, services uh, based on uh, the traffic paths from uh, end users to edge service replicas. Uh, the other three, the other three um, are present in uh, our position paper, and if you want further details, you should uh, you can find them there. Regarding observability, we propose the energy-aware back pressure, uh, whose aim is to collect uh, energy KPIs at different levels, uh, such as at uh, vertical application level, at slice level, and also at overall uh, network level and to uh, make all the stakeholders uh, aware of such KPIs. Regarding the uh, optimization techni techniques, we propose uh, two concepts. The edge agility one, which uh, consists of the uh, space shift of network functions and or uh, vertical application components based on, for example, user movements or, uh, for example, based on availability of renewable uh, energy. Uh, so with uh, Edge Agility, we would be able to uh, provide services only when and where they are needed. Uh, finally, the last, uh, the last method we propose is green elasticity. Uh, which consists in the uh, dynamic and adaptive uh, hardware-assisted uh, offloading uh, of network functions and or vertical application components uh, in case of uh, uh, very uh, heavy uh, workloads with uh, very high uh, requirements in terms of uh, latency, for example. Thank you. If you have any questions, please ask them. Yeah, um, there will be discussion moment, um, and you can ask okay. us on the on the chat. Um, next up, John. Yeah, do you see my screen and do you hear me? Yes. Good. So this is a presentation trying to summarize what we should not do trying to summarize what has been mentioned both in the paper and in previous uh, discussions. And a lot of things have been about energy inefficiency. Uh, as several people talking about, we should not use bad sources of energy with uh, some different uh, definition of what is green. Uh, then we have, we should not do luxury consumerism or basically unnecessary things that are not needed. Uh, should not uh, use systems that use a lot of resources, either when you create them like water, land, minerals, or create a lot of e-waste. Uh, should not do digital consumerism. This might be very bad condition during, for example, mining of things or much pollution during the production, or it might be e-waste that was sent for, even when it's formally sent for recycling. Um, should not do things that have a negative impact on society. Um, should not use numbers that don't add up, a little bit different aspects. Uh, should not send too many acts or in general, not send too many messages. Um, and we should not fly, which use ICT systems instead. Um, some slides on specific topics. Energy efficiency has been discussed a lot. A clear low hanging fruit for what not to do here is crypto assets with proof of work. They use energy like a small country. They could also be seen as having a negative impact and being unuseful. Uh, another example was this Seabor binary versus JSON MIME text with a 30% thing. New protocols can generally decrease And at least I lost your voice. Yeah, me too. If they are more secure. So I lost the last minute of your 
jag tror. Aha, you did. Uh, um, but here you, do you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I yes. Another discussion is to not use bad energy sources. Uh, people has what should we do? What is bad and what is what we should use instead has been different. Green and clean and might not be well defined. Renewable might be a little bit off target and maybe not enough. Uh, might be better to be more concrete. Like don't use systems that energy sources with large greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, other things that are bad with with energy sources is maybe the second largest bad thing is maybe air pollution. Uh, then you have of course other bad things that can be bad with energy sources, also like uh, use of resources or other forms of pollution and, and waste. Um, uh, there's been discussion that we should have carbon and we're networking. Uh, maybe that can uh, handle other aspects in the future also if that is developed. Uh, this is a bit hard for the ITF to control. It is easier to control the first aspects, especially about protocols, how energy efficient they are. Uh, but in general, we should consider life cycles of the systems as, uh, as a whole. Um, then my last slide is about e-waste overconsumption, digital colonialism. These are a bit uh, related um, uh, as overconsumption in the production. Uh, production often is in third world countries, while the products are used in the, in the industrial rich countries. And the same is true with e-waste. A lot of e-waste, even when they're sent for recycling in the Western world, they end up in a non-responsible way in developing countries. Um, so we should avoid things that produce a lot of e-waste, at least that cannot be recycled in a responsible way. Um, Thanks a lot. And uh, we're going to move right on to Yukas uh, talking. You're the last one. See if the video starts or not. Looks like it's not starting. I hear you though. Oh, that's better. Okay. Can we even see you now? Okay. So, a few words. I had a you know short title with four letters and I took the liberty to, to upgrade that a bit, but uh, let's see how this works. So, um, yeah, um, this, I added kind of the end towards sustainability. That was my, my contribution to the workshop earlier. And uh, in, I have actually beyond this slide, I have just questions. I don't have a single answer and a single proposal for you, for everybody, but rather have been following the discussion on the list and in these meetings and and uh, made some notes on on that on on the sustainability ietf angle so not selling anything but uh, starting starting from way way further in trying to understand what sustainability and sustainable and stuff like that is then if you even go to the UN Sustainable Development Goals, then that's a huge area. It, it has elements that, you know, there was in the pre previous presentation and Vesna has been talking about similar topics, so not simply just, you know, big, fixing some smaller technological issue, but looking at the big perspective. I'm not saying that we, that ITF or IAB should be discussing all these 17 goals, but just to highlight that sustainability means a lot of different things. If we go a bit more into the to the topic, then I have two slides of only questions because uh, the, the, I've been working on this, let's say, energy efficiency and, and sustainability topic in ICT for over 10 years. And it's always a kind of challenge in what is scoped 
and what is actually what people see as the scope and what they are looking at. For example, energy has been mentioned many times. Are we talking about are we measuring electrical energy? Are we measuring, you know, ICT's use of all possible energy sources on this planet? Are we talking about renewable energy? Or just energy usage as a whole? For example, if every, everything is renewable in the future, is the problem solved? I think in, in the previous slide, you could, you could see that, you know, there's no such thing as, you know, emission free energy. There are less and less and more em re, uh, kind of emissions from an energy source, but all energy sources need to be built and deployed and so forth. Or are we talking about embodied energy or just the operational side? I've seen many discussions, you know, in this last week on the, on the topic. Or are we talking about carbon emissions or energy? Carbon emissions, are we talking about scopes one, two, three, and there was scope four mentioned today, even. So this seems to be totally depending on who's talking. And or are we talking about coming back to the you know embodied energy? And are we talking about and actually the previous presentation had this, you know, um, waste and so forth. So are we talking about the whole life cycle? of ICT, of equipment, of systems, of networks, or just, you know, something related to the operational, operational side. Seems to be that people are talking about different things. And if we're talking about, you know, for example, hardware, then again, is it just operational? Is it the whole life cycle? There's been these discussions on the, on the mailing list on this idle consumption or are, are, are hardware vendors implementing you know, energy proportional systems? Are they load-based? Is there load-based consumption or everything is flat? So it doesn't really matter whether you are sending one bit or 10 gigabits, it's the same. So, you know, who cares? Again, seems to be different different viewpoints, whether it's in scope or not of IETF or IAB to make proposals, suggestions on hardware implementation. That's, you know, again, as I said, to me, it's an open question. And my last slide, again, continue the same chain of thought, or throwing out, or are we talking about on one hand hardware, on one hand software? Should we be discussing, for example, some implementation guidelines, some, you know, ways to do more clever implementations, more energy efficient or carbon saving, depending on depending on your metric and KPI. So is, would that be in scope? I don't have the answer. Just raising out questions that I, I see are, are need to be discussed. Or are we simply talking about architectures and their impact? How different things are there was, for example, these uh, different ways of routing routing have been mentioned many times so is that something that would be in scope or not in scope or are we maybe focusing on protocol level things again you know you could you could you could do, work, do one or both or any any combination then coming back to the scope four and in general are we simply talking about footprint or Often, often people, especially in the in the let's say uh, ICT sector, in the business side, often want to advocate the handprint side. So the scope four, as was mentioned, so how much good it does, so that neglects the bad. But what is what would be the in, what would be in scope for the IETF to consider potentially in the future? Again, in my opinion, the open question. Then are we talking about simply short term things, you know, just to use renewable energy and problem solved? Or are we talking about long term questions, for example, just using less absolute amounts of energy because all energy sources need to be built? So it's not necessarily simply about just use renewables and, you know, problem solved or, 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 or things like that. So in that sense, uh, and our energy sources in general, even in the ITF scope, to consider, you know, what energy sources companies are using. I mean, there are countries who have, you know, very little renewable sources, and then there's countries like Norway, which, uh, as far as I understand, was 99% renewables. So does Norway need to do anything because they are running on renewables? So again, 
And at the end, it seems to be that, you know, the final question, is there a problem in the first place to, to consider by the IAB or IETF? Because on one hand, if you look at these different, you know, uh, trends and trends and, and kind of views to the future, some say we are going going in the wrong direction. And of course, some people say that we are going in the right direction and, and hardware solves the problem and everything is fine. So even that doesn't, to me, it doesn't seem to be clear that uh, that uh, is there even a problem to consider. But I'll stop here. That's my kind of three three slides of questions, questions, questions. Thank you. And maybe that's sort of a fitting final presentation because it sort of points to the fact that we have lots of open questions. I yeah, maybe there actually are some answers to your, your questions. I think we have a pretty wide scope. We can't only focus on a narrow thing. Some of some things are, of course, outside the scope of IETF to make improvements in, but we still probably need to understand that those things are happening. But I'll open it for general discussion now. And um, yeah, like, um, uh, conclusions and uh, proposals for next steps and and such, I I will take at the end a little bit of time for um, my view where we are. Um, I took some notes during the session, um, but um, go ahead. Um, either shoot questions to the presenters or make comments about stuff that you think we should focus on do or do or actions that are doable. Uh, Jerry, I haven't heard anything from service providers. Maybe one or two are present, but I haven't heard uh, much from operate network operators. Most of the presentations from academia or people in the industry, but I haven't heard anything from service providers, network operators, carriers. Yeah, that and that's actually a common problem in in many contexts at the ITF. Um, this is not we're not alone in that respect. But if anybody fr from the operators actually wants to speak up and and is present, then please please speak up. We do did have some some data from them, but, but it's always the um, yeah. I, I work for a vendor. Um, we try to innovate on on stuff, um, but somehow sometimes we're too eager. It'd be much better to hear from the people who actually run things. Is the uh, plus Q mechanism still used or sorry? <laughs> uh, well, uh, we didn't say anything about that, but yeah, yes, go ahead. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I think the, the, the main question to the organizers is if you already have any ideas if or how we should continue the discussion um, outside of, of, of your answer. I, I'd certainly, you know, been seeing um, um, welcoming, um, you know, um, people in the ops area working group, just, um, uh, when, when there are things that can be put into the form of, uh, IETF, uh, submissions, which may or may not be appropriated to continue the discussion best. But, uh, yeah, so I think, you know, short of really talking about subjects right now, I was wondering about that primarily. Uh, yes, uh, that's sort of a preview of what um, we had in mind is, is that um, there will there's some practical uh, um, you know next steps for for the workshop we'll write the report as we normally do we'll talk about this in the IAB open um, some of the things that are being talked about will progress independently probably there's some metrics work TDR working group will will go ahead and and many other things will happen uh, either at the ITF or elsewhere, say implementation improvements. Um, I think we should also continue this a, a bit more widely. Um, maybe there's some other things that we should be talk, uh, doing. Um, maybe get the OPS area involved. Um, I think we should continue the good discussion on the mailing list um, in, the, in this um, gathering and perhaps open it up for everybody who wants to join. Yeah, if that can be transformed into an open mailing list with, um, you know, with an archive or so, that would certainly be the least overhead and least controversial approach. Um, 
the 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 form that I did like um, in in the IETF, of course, are I think I'd already said that uh, um, in before the special interest working groups, which are not that much tied to um, uh, the deliverables that we usually expect from working groups or research groups, um, but that are more to to bring communities together. Um, so um, maybe that would also be something for you to to look into if that would be appropriate. Thank you. And I'm trying to track the queue. Where are we? Um, Chris. Hi, folks. Thank you. Um, there was one thing, a reflection I wanted to share that is probably unique or interesting, specifically in the network context, is that um, among all the papers I saw, uh, I think beyond a reference from Bruce Norman's paper talking about a power price index as a, one, a way to kind of communicate things like the cost and carbon intensity of electricity, I'm, I'm aware that I didn't actually see any research about how things like peering or paying for transit might work. Power and different prices, different kind of carbon intensity in different parts of the world. And I feel like because the internet has a kind of different, unique, uh, different economic model with ideas like peering and different stewardship of resources, I figured that might be quite, quite a fertile ground for research that other sectors and other places might not be so well placed to do where there's probably a chance for the ITF to share some really groundbreaking stuff that could be adopted in, other, in lots of places. That was one thing and I, I'm sharing that part as a provocation and I'd be really up for exploring that on the mailing list if there's anyone else who's looked at any of that at all. Sounds like an exciting topic. Uh, and then let's we'll see. Rob. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, thanks. Yeah, I've put my comments sort of mainly in the chat, actually. Uh, my question is sort of back to Turles, uh, is whether we should be trying to set up a working group in the short term. So I think there's been a lot of very interesting discussion here. Some of it, I think, is is things that are quite actionable in the short term that we can do. I think Suresh's document he's proposing of suggestions is quite easy to act on quite quickly. Uh, generating metrics is quite easy to act on quite quickly. And there's other things I think we've discussed where we've seeing wider issues that might not be something you can solve in the IETF at all. I do wonder whether creating a working group within the IETF in the short term would be a good idea to, to act as a focal point for these discussions. I do have a question whether that just ends up at being a talking shop or and or what sort of actionable work it can do. Um, but similar as uh, I think as Turner said about like these special interest groups and IOT ops, I think it's a bit like that. Having a focal point, this might be a way of coordinating and moving this work more quickly within the ITF. Um, I don't know. So that's one thought that I have or suggestion, maybe. Yeah, it's a good, good question. I don't know what the answer is really, but um, uh, we also have a fairly uh, broad range of topics and some are at the research side of things, some are very practical things and they also cross different areas and some are on routing, some are on other stuff. Um, so it may not be super easy either to have one place. But, um, uh, yes, it wouldn't necessarily be you had to do the work there. So IT ops sort of tried to coordinate work within other working groups. So in some cases, that that aspect of doing like the routing work within the routing, I think is fine. And the aspect of uh, like longer term versus short term, I think we'd have to have a goal of only be looking at work within the ITF for short shorter term goals, and the longer term stuff you'd say would be in the IRTF. Would be my thought. Thank you. Uh, next up on the queue is Pernilla. Yes, so thank you. So I had a, a comment or reflection, which is general, and especially I came to think of it when listening to Eva and Jukka. So uh, I think Eva mentioned something around um, the gap analysis. Uh, you referred back to me as well. Uh, I think in addition to, to or when entering a collaboration with other organizations or, or starting some gap analysis, analysis it would probably be good to uh, sort of curve out a niche for, for IETF because there, is, there are so many initiatives going on all over the place. Uh, and uh, um, I think what, what we have during these days, have, we, have, we have been high level, we have been on details, we have been going wide, we have been going narrow, and we have been on the principal level and the practical level. Uh, so I think it would really be good to, to maybe 
sort out a niche on on what I what what could be the main uh, um, aspects or, or or the main uh, value that IETF could contribute. What what could uh, you do that no one else could do? And the the second would be uh, like on the advocating plane, which is. Uh, things that are maybe more high level, but, but uh, which might be ongoing in different places, but you want uh, to push a certain direction. So, so I thought it could be good, that, that could be a good way of thinking to, to, to find the position in this already quite complex landscape. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Suresh. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, uh, Pernilla. I think really good point. I think like Rob made a really good point, like have a focal point, may not have to produce work, but at least like where people can go and talk. So totally up for that. And I think one more thing I wanted to add is like, there's some stuff that we cannot do, right? Like I think like Pernilla brought it up, like uh, Rob brought it up, a bunch of people brought it up. I think the IAB can be the, the, the group that kind of dispatches it off to somebody else. So we probably have some relationships with some other SDOs, like where this work can be done. So if there's something we can figure out, I don't know, Senelec or anything right, that we are actually talking to, uh, I think it might be a good thing to kind of like also pass information to other SDOs on things that could be useful for us that we don't either have the expertise or don't want to do. I think you, uh, Bruce has his hand up. Thank you. Bruce, go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. This has been a great session this last uh, four days. Um, I, I would just like to raise two points. One is that, as I mentioned a few um, days ago, the energy use of all electronic devices is probably about an order of magnitude larger than network equipment. And there are things that the IETF and the IAB could do to help reduce the energy use of those uh, Internet connected electronic devices um, that would be probably larger than everything we could do uh, to reduce the energy use of network equipment. And we should be mindful of that and um, <clears throat> pay attention uh, to that as well. But I think the thing that we could do that would be the greatest uh, effect on total carbon emissions uh, globally would be to help our electricity system move from the 19th century to the 21st century. Our, our electricity technology, whether it be wide area network, uh, how uh, electricity networks are organized to even more importantly, how this organized locally within buildings is has hardly changed in many important respects uh, since the 1880s. And it desperately needs an upgrade. And I think we really don't appreciate the, the fact that the internet technology was a revolution that overthrew our unitary phone system to move to a network model. And we desperately need to do the same thing for electricity. And we've done this, so we know we've learned a lot about how to um, sort of reinvent a technology um, on a network model. And the electricity people really have a lack of, of vision in this area and, and desperately need the help of uh, the people on this call. So, so please, please help out. <laughs> That's there's far more carbon at stake in in improving our electricity system, so we can integrate more renewables and reduce costs um, than than everything else we could do. So thank you. Hey, Hossein, did you want to say something? Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you, Ari. Uh, yes, I joined the, the, uh, the, the, the praise for the workshop. Quite, quite interesting, quite wide area of, of topics have been discussed quite enlightening. On, on, the, on the topic of um, collaborating with other STOs, um, I, I think um, it makes quite good sense to consider one of them as, as the, the ITU and Etsy, as Pramila has mentioned. On the ITU side, study group 13 focus on future networks, looking at um, uh, expansions of existing architectures, um, um, some, some uh, uh, new, new protocols that could be considered. Um, and study group five, which looks at, looks at the envi environmental um, aspects of, of ICTs. Um, uh, I think it would be quite critical um, and it's an expectation for, for the IETF who have, has the, the protocol experience, or the, the IP stack experience, that, um, that such knowledge comes from, from the IETF um, and also for reasons of continuity and also for backwards compatibility. Um, one of the issues is with proposals of protocol expansions and um, 
and uh, new enhancements that uh, interoperability with existing architecture could be could be put at risk. So it needs to be considered, and I think IT, IETF will be the best place to to in, to ensure that whatever protocols expansions are being considered, um, they would be um, interoperable um, and backwards compatible and can coexist with the, with existing uh, architectures. One area it um, that could be um, uh, 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 at risk is to to with lack of interoperability, if these protocols are done somewhere else, that um, fragmentation of the network would be would be uh, or could could take place. So I, I think these are areas to to consider, and I share the the view that collaboration in this vast space is necessary because no entity has the whole experience of the of the value chain. Uh, but I, I think also um, we need to focus on where we have the expertise and can lend our expertise to other STOs and collaborate on that for, on that front. Thank you. Yeah, good points. Um, and indeed, collaboration is the way to go, and finding the our niche, as Pernilla put it, I think, um, is um, is key. And um, we don't own the whole whole problem; we own part of it. And even for the part that we are working on, we need to maybe sometimes understand what's going on in other other parts. Um, uh, as an example, if we want, want to play tricks on our side on like when, when things are up and down and so on, um, we would actually have to understand what the link layers do and whether that's beneficial or, or not or, or under what circumstances. So there's a lot, lot to um, coordinate with. Maybe even, yeah, possibly some meetings where there's more uh, joint participation on, in this space that might be a useful thing. Um, looking at the time, I think um, I don't see anybody else having their hands up. Um, if not, then I'll just go briefly to my final slides and go. I think um, I think you see my screen. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna, I, I, I I will have sort of a technical conclusions, I'll cover that last, but just that the next steps in the workshop, uh, we talked about that a little bit already when Torres was asking about this, but uh, discussion on the list should continue. We'll work on a draft report. Um, if if uh, you are interested, please contribute. We don't probably need 50 people helping, but we would appreciate a couple, like everybody um, or a person at least for, for each of the sections, and the sections are roughly like our sessions where um, something like that would probably be helpful. Uh, we'll be uh, editing it with Colin, I, I, I think, but uh, that help would be appreciated. We'll have some discussions at the IETF. Um, I don't exactly know what the answer is in terms of a new working group. I think that needs more more discussion. Uh, we also heard about, um, yeah, even and uh, Suresh, I think you talked about the sustainability considerations and trade-offs document. Uh, that's a, that's clearly a possibility. Um, and as has been mentioned, there's some some things that are in progress, or at least should be in progress. Um, if if you're having problems getting your metrics approved in some working group, please yell and yell loudly. And the rest of us can probably help. Um, I'll try and help there. Um, I, I, I keep thinking that we're not doing enough. If, if this is all that we do, it's not probably enough. We'll probably have to do some other things. So if, if you have ideas, please suggest maybe given the time, suggest them on the on the chat window. Um, yeah, um, before I go forward, Colin, did you have anything else to say? Um. Yeah, um, so, so to, to wrap up from my point of view, uh, I mean, th this has been an interesting workshop. Um, certainly a lot of things to think about. Um, I think a lot of these are short term things, things we can do uh, engineering wise that can happen reasonably quickly. Um, there's also clearly a bunch of interesting research questions. Um, there's a bunch of things which are in scope for the ITF community, uh, a bunch of things which are a lot broader scope. Um, I think, as, as Eve said, uh, we need to remember the urgency. Right? It, it's easy to just say we need to do more research. Um, and, and clearly, we do need to do more research. Uh, but I think we need to build on the momentum uh, and act and 
maybe develop some standards in the ITF, maybe be develop some changes and some work elsewhere. But we need to think about how we actually affect practical change in the relatively near term. So uh, I think this has been interesting, but I think there's there's a lot more to do. And uh, I, I look forward to doing that. Thanks. Um, I'm going to show one more thing, but in the, in the, in the background or in the meanwhile, um, we'd like to know how this workshop went. And um, given that we're running out of time quickly, then maybe we're not going to do this verbally. So you could do two things. You could comment in the chat. We'll save the chat log. Or if you feel like it, you can also email me and Colin. Um, and we'll uh, collect the, the feedback and, and try and build, a, build an understanding of what we did well or what could be improved. Certainly from my perspective, this has been a stellar workshop. We really appreciate the diversity of uh, backgrounds and opinions and, and learnings that I, I at least personally uh, gained in this workshop. So that, that's great. And I think there's, um, there's indeed um, momentum and urgency, and it doesn't mean that we have to like do huge things right now, but it does mean that we have to do some things every year and keep improving. I think that's, that, that is the way to go. And um, anyway, so the one, one more thing that I wanted to show, and, and this isn't complete by any uh, any chance, but I was doing that on the background while you guys were talking, so uh, please excuse me, but um, I did take some notes on like what are the observations. So one was on this continuous improvement and influence, understanding how internet can help the society understand what the situation is and why is it like, like it is and how could we affect that and understand the trade-offs. There's a bunch of useful tools. Much of the discussion was focused on, you know, naturally on the IETF protocol design issues, and some of it was was specifically on routing. Um, and it's probably a little bit broader than that that we have to uh, worry about. At, at least in terms of like in our day jobs, um, worry about the implementations, worry about renewables as well as protocol design. Um, actions that we should take. Um, continue the discussion. Um, connecting the IETF to others, I think that's sort of a long-term thing. That how can we, you know, not just have one meeting with somebody else, but but make sure that we are on the map and um, understand what what's needed and have have the discussion partners uh, where where that actually matters. Uh, maybe IETF, uh, I'm sorry, IEEE and TTPP as, as sort of a link layer uh, organizations come to mind. We should pick the low-hanging fruits. The uh, avoiding the lengthy formats, the crypto assets, and a non renewable energy. The big picture goals I think we should actually have a full understanding of Internet's impact. And, and like, I'm not going to join the uh, uh, chorus of people saying that we shouldn't do research, we should act. I think we can actually do both. There's, uh, to begin with, um, you know, we have researchers participating in academia and there's a lot of interest in and, and funding on this these topics and uh, we, we can actually do multiple things at the same time and um, and the academia in particular is is more geared towards understanding than, than necessarily uh, fixing product, products for instance the sponsor of research that needs doing I think we should dive into that somehow and yeah um, I, I think that's more or less it. Um, clearly, um, we need to write up uh, what happened in the workshop and summarize it more nicely than, than this slide, but uh, a lot of really good material and lots of leads for us to actually go and pursue and leads for different time scales, short term and long term. So that's also really good because we also need the thing that we need to do in, in five or 10 years. So. I think it's all good. Colin, any final words? Uh, I think you have covered everything really well. Um, thank you for all your efforts uh, putting this together. Thank you, and thank you everybody. And presenters in, partic and in particular, and people who commented and participated in the list. So. I think this is it for this workshop. Don't forget the mailing list. Keep uh, um, sending us email. We'll try and see um, how we can open it up. And uh, 
and figure out what we will do in addition to the mentioned things uh, at the next IETF. So do stay tuned. Thank you.